Hi folks. Um, so I just got uh, in the mail. I'm very excited. Um, my copy of the Beatles Revolver Super Deluxe Edition. Um, new reissue and I'm about to take it out of the box. So I uh, just wanted to share that fun. Um, start with a little bit of uh, background. Um, the Beatles recorded this album in the spring of 1966. It's their seventh album. Uh, comes in between Rubber Soul and Sgt. Pepper's. Um, so it's at a period of increasing experimentation and intense creativity. It was the last album that they recorded before they stopped touring. Um, as soon as they were finished with this album in June of 1966, they went on the road. Um, they had a terrible time. <laughs> um, John Lennon had made some controversial comments about Jesus Christ, so they got a lot of slack stick from American wing nuts and um, they pissed off uh, the dictator of the Philippines, so they almost got the crap beat out of them. Actually, I think they did get the crap beat out of them. They almost got killed in the Philippines, but they managed to escape. Um, uh, so that was the end of touring for them was uh, uh, when they, right after they recorded this album, when they went out on this tour. Um, uh, it was recorded on a four track recorder, um, which becomes important uh, in understanding why this uh, edition was kind of a surprise. The technology to um, uh, do a, uh, a remix, uh, uh, you know, a, um, a worthwhile, um, useful, useful remix of this album uh, was only recently invented for the Get Back documentary. Uh, that Peter Jackson did, um, and it's, uh, I can maybe briefly explain, I have uh, some limited experience with four track recorders, I'm not an expert by any means, but um, so basically, um, if you think of the recording tape, um, like my hand of, uh, for a four track recorder, you basically splits the tape into four separate tracks or channels. Um, and so when you're recording, let's say you're recording Ringo's drums on this track and Paul's bass on this track and George's guitar on this track and John's guitar on this track, um, then uh, you, you're done. You've got your four tracks. Um, and so you can't add anything to that. Um, so what you do, the way, they, the way they would get around this back when they only had four tracks um, was they would record on three of the tracks. Um, so they might double up um, George's and John's guitars on, you know, on one track. Um, and, you know, Ringo's drums on this track and Paul's bass on this track. And then what you can do is you can take these three tracks, the contents of these three tracks, and you can bounce them over to this track um, and you, you mix them as you do that. So, um, so you, you know, you get your levels, right? You, you know, you get the bass as loud as you want it to be. You get the guitars where you want them. You get the drums where you want them in relation to each other and you bounce them down to this fourth track. And then you can, once they're here, you've got these three tracks you can use again. You can, you know, put, uh, lead vocals on this track and backing vocals on this track and you know if somebody wants to shake a maraca you can put it on this track or whatever and you you can um you know or you could do you could do on, on two of the tracks and bounce those to your third track um but the problem is every time you do that bouncing you lose a generation of quality um, and also, you, you, you've you mixed your these three tracks down to this track. You can't do any any further mixing within the track. So if you decide later, like, oh, the bass isn't loud enough, you can't do anything about that because it's already mixed at the same, you know, it's already mixed into where the drums and the guitars are. 
on, on this channel. So if you're if you mix the bass louder, you also have to mix everything else that's on this track louder because it's all one piece of sound now. It's all on the same channel. Um, so uh, so there was a they weren't able to um, you know take the, all of the individual sounds and mix them to their you know their most advantageous. Uh, extent um, until um, Peter Jackson uh, and his team devised this uh, what they call a demixing technology for the Get Back film uh, because a lot of a lot of the stuff for in the Get Back sessions was recorded in mono, um, so they only had one channel to work with. So he was able to work out some technology where they were able to separate all the individual bits, the bass and the guitar and the drums and the vocals, and they're able to separate them in a way that actually sounds halfway decent. And then you can remix them, you know, on an individual level. So uh, Peter Jackson let them borrow it for this project. So they were able to, um, to get in and do fully fledged remixes of uh, all the basic channels um, for this. So um, so it'll be very interesting to hear how that comes out. Um, the early reviews suggest that it worked really well. So um, we'll see how that is. So um, so yeah, so let's get into the let's get into the unboxing here. So so I came in this nice box. It says UMG Supply Chain Limited. Um, it's got a catalog number and a an ID and it says it was made in the Czech Republic. So Just slide open the box here. Uh, another another bit of trivia is that um, the the in when this album was released in the UK, it had 14 tracks. Um, but the U.S. version only had 11 because their U.S. record company uh, was cheap and they wanted to squeeze as much as possible out of each album that the Beatles did. So they would only put 11 or 12 tracks, uh, I, I guess it was 11 up until this album, uh, tracks on each album. Um, and they had already used three of the songs that were going to be on Revolver for uh, Yesterday and Today. Um, so they would, you know, they would get an extra album every couple of albums because they would put the, the singles on, which they didn't do in the UK for the most part. Um, and they would only do 11 tracks. So every three albums, they would get a fourth album's worth of material out of it. Um, so, um, so the three album, the three tracks from Revolver that they used on yesterday and today were Dr. Robert and Your Bird Can Sing and I'm Only Sleeping, which is one of my favorite Beatles songs. Um, so when they when they did the CD reissues of the Beatles albums in the 80s, uh, they uh, restored the uh, original British track listings, and um, so the UK version's been the standard ever since then. So, um, so here's the box. It's got the uh, a replica of the original cover on it. Um, the front cover was designed by a guy named Klaus Vormann, who was a friend of the Beatles. Um, he, they met him when they uh, toured, uh, when they um, went to Hamburg, Germany in, in the early 60s. He was one of the first people that they met there and they became friends with him and he was an art student. Um, so they got him to, um, to draw and collage the, uh, the um, the album cover out of uh, photographs uh, of the Beatles that they had um, given him. That he cut them out and pasted them on and uh, into these bits that he that he had drawn. So um, he was also Klaus Vormann was also a bass player, um, and he actually plays on some of the solo Beatles recordings. Like he's on. Um, He's on the Ringo album, and I think he plays on some of the Plastic Ono band recordings that Lennon did with Yoko Ono and uh, sort of ad hoc groups of musicians in the late 60s and through the mid 70s. 
Well, let's get the plastic wrap off of here. And we'll see what's next. What do we got in the inside here? Okay, so it looks like it slides out here. You got your little spine there, so you can display it on your. Uh... Okay, so inside we have another replica album cover, front and the back, same. And inside, you got these pouches that have your CDs, so. Um, first CD, another miniature replica of the album cover. And the, this first disc is a new stereo mix, and that has a replica of the original uh, record label, uh, Parlophone Records, which was their record label. So the, the uh, first disc here is a new stereo mix. Um, that was done by Giles Martin, who is the son of George Martin, the Beatles' original producer. Um, George and Giles collaborated on some, uh, some remixes of Beatles material um, right before George's hearing um, went. Uh, he, he started to um, lose his hearing with his old age. And, and his, I, I guess apparently, uh, I learned this actually, um, from this happening to George Martin, as you get older, your ears, the, the, the pitch that your ears hear changes. Um, and that can really drive some people crazy that have perfect pitch because it, your, that your, 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 your pitch deteriorates as you age. And that's what happened to George Martin. And it really messed with his ability to uh, appreciate music that he, that he loved when he was younger. He was no longer able to enjoy it because he wasn't hearing it at the proper pitch. <laughs> Kind of drove him crazy. So, um, so the second disc here. Um, oh, so the so a little bit more. The so the so this is a new stereo mix that was done using the demixing technology. Um, and Giles has done. He did the 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 new stereo mixes that are on the Sgt. Pepper's box, the White Album box, the Abbey Road box, and the Let It Be box. And um, in my opinion, he's done a really good job on, uh, on all of those so far. Um, he said, I saw in an interview that he said he was not, cer not certain he wanted to take on the Revolver one because he wasn't sure whether the demixing technology was going to work. But apparently, he, uh, he decided that it was because here we, here we are. Um, yeah. So the, um, the second disc is, uh, is the original Mono Master. Uh, it's a new mix of that. Um, and there was already a, a, a new mix of the, um, uh, it was, it's not a new mix, it's the original mix, but it's just a, a mix um, remastered using today, you know, today's technology. Um, they already did, a, 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 they already redid all of the mono masters in 2009 for the mono box. Um, but the, some of the technology has improved even a little bit more since then. So, um, so they've uh, done it again. Um, so discs three and four. Uh, our um, sessions uh, outtakes. Um, so you have a few different mixes of all of the songs on the album and um, the, the single that was recorded around the same time as the album, um, which is uh, Paperback Writer and Rain, uh, which is one of my favorite singles. I think Rain is probably my favorite Beatles song. Uh, my second favorite probably being I, I'm Only Sleeping, which is also on this album. So, um, so those are in little replica sleeves. Um, sure, what the? I guess this is a. I think this is a new cover that was created for this out of little bits of the collage that uh, Klaus created for the the um, the album cover, and then the. Uh, 
the last disc is an EP, um, and it contains a uh, new stereo mix and the original mono mix, uh, you know, remaster of the original mono mix of the paperback writer uh, slash rain single. So it's all, so it's both of those tracks in, in new, new mono and stereo, a uh, new stereo mix and a uh, new master of the original mono mix. They didn't do it. They didn't do a new mix of it. Um, they just did a cleaner mix, I guess, a cleaner master of it, I guess. Um, so the um, next bit here is this huge hardcover booklet, this thick uh, album size coffee table book. Uh, got uh, track listing. Forward by Paul McCartney, Introduction by Giles Martin, uh, an essay called Evolver by Questlove from The Roots, um, The Road to Revolver, uh, and Track by Track and the Cover, and uh, the uh, Reception, several essays by Kevin Howlett, who's kind of the Beatles um, historian slash archivist at this point in time. So I've got some nice pictures. That looks like a picture from the, uh, the rain video clip since the Beatles weren't doing many, they, they toured, but they weren't doing many live appearances at that point. So they um, started making video clips to send out on the road for them to do the, the press tour for them. So um, so the, the one for Rain is some play there. So here's a uh, this, uh, so the road to revolver, I assume, is uh, the story of the making of the album, how they recorded each of the tracks and how they were written and so, so on and so forth. Uh, recording sheets. Lyrics, uh, facsimiles of the uh, first drafts of the lyrics. So track by track breakdowns, who's playing on what, uh, how it was recorded. More pictures. Uh, outtakes, notes, <laughs> the dog is very wanting to make this a dialogue, not sure what this is. A Beatles comic. <clears throat> One of my favorite albums by them too. And credits, and there's uh, some guitars. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to listening to this. But uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope this was interesting.